So now let's talk about the last molecule uh, that was tested in 2020, also showed a positive effect on lifespan. This is 16-alpha-hydroxyestriol. So this is also known as estriol. So you, if you'll see it sometimes referred to that. Um, this is a weak estrogen, and it only has about 10 to 20% of the binding affinity of estrogen for the estrogen receptor. And it's used primarily clinically as part of hormone replacement therapy for menopausal symptoms in women. Okay, so this is this is part of uh, HRT for some women. So again, this is super interesting to me because like the SGLT2 inhibitors, estriol came out as a winner in the study from the UK population as a drug that was associated with lower all-cause mortality. Um, and Again, I refer you to the episode where we really do a deep dive into that paper if you want to get a closer look at this. But um, but it was interesting to me that estriol and I think five other estrogens out of the 16 molecules that were associated with lower all-cause mortality uh, were, these, were in the class of the estrogens. So that was probably the strongest signal to me that came out of that study. Interestingly there, that was only in women because it was only in women where enough people had been prescribed these estrogen molecules. So again, in that study, there was a strong correlation between estrogens, including this molecule, and lower all-cause mortality in women specifically. Okay, so why was 16-alpha-hydroxyestriol tested by the ITP? And this goes back to 17-alpha-estradiol, which I previously mentioned, which had been shown by the ITP to increase lifespan specifically in male but not female mice. So this was seen in the 2009 cohort, started at 10 months of age. And then again, in the 2011 cohort, at a higher dose, and then 17-alpha-estradiol was also tested again in the 2016 cohort at a higher dose, but beginning late in life, at 20 months of age. And in every case, there was this male-specific increase in lifespan. So again, let me just say that again, because it's a little bit complicated. So 17-alpha-estradiol has been tested three times by the intervention testing program, starting at 10 months of age starting at young age, but at a higher dose, and then starting at 20 months of age, which is about the mouse equivalent of a 60-year-old person. In every case, it increased lifespan in males, but not in female mice. Okay, so again, a very, very robust and reproducible effect, but sex-specific in its effect from 17-alpha estradiol. So it was also observed in a metabolomic study uh, that the UM HET3 mice treated with 17-alpha estradiol had elevated level, levels of two specific metabolites in their livers, estriol 3-sulfate and 16-oxoestradiol 3-sulfate. Okay, so the names don't really matter. Just appreciate that these are two molecules that are um, intermediates in the conversion of 17-alpha estradiol to 16 alpha hydroxyestriol. And so the hypothesis was that 16 alpha hydroxyestriol may be a downstream component of the mechanism by which 17 alpha estradiol was increasing lifespan specifically in male mice and that the 16 alpha hydroxyestriol might increase lifespan in both male and female mice. Okay, so hopefully that was clear. Again, short answer is this molecule was tested because the thought was this might be downstream in the lifespan extension pathway for 17-alpha estradiol and that it might give both male and female effects rather than the male-specific effects that had been previously seen. And that appears to be half correct. So it did in fact increase lifespan, but again, it was only in male mice Interestingly here, there appeared to be a small but statistically significant lifespan shortening effect in female mice. I don't know what that shortening effect means, um, but it does appear to be the case that this metabolite is in the pathway for how 17-alpha estradiol is increasing lifespan in male mice. So, um, 
So that's interesting. Now, again, I want to come back to that UK study because there, these estrogens, including estriol and estradiol, were associated with lower all-cause mortality, specifically in females, in humans. So again, just re-emphasizing the idea that I don't want to draw too much from this sex-specific, male-specific effect in the UM HET3 mice to conclude that the same sex-specific effect is going to be present in humans. We just don't, we just don't know. Okay. So I think what we really need at this point, obviously, is a mechanistic understanding for what's underlying these sex-specific effects and whether these sex-specific effects are somehow specific to UM-HET3. Um, and so again, I, I alluded to earlier that UM-HET3 is genetically mixed, which probably makes it a better strain background for longevity testing than a very inbred strain like C57 Black 6. But it would be interesting to know of these interventions that have a sex-specific effect in UM-HET3, do they also have a sex-specific effect in something like C57 Black 6 in mice? Because if they increase lifespan in both males and females in a different strain background, that might tell us that there's something here about females in UM-HET3 or males, I suppose, that are leading to this sex-specific effect. I think we just really don't know at this point.